Alright guys, thanks for joining me on another tutorial. This time we'll be going through the Flesh Eater Quartz and the basic recipe that I use for these. Now I've already taken the liberty to prime this bottle in Stano Res Black Primer and baste it out with Nagath Knight Purple by Citadel. The next step we're going to take is we're going to go through and start giving some highlighted tones to the skin with Flayed One Flesh by Citadel. Um, and we're going to try and focus this around the larger muscle areas, trying to leave as much of the purple in the recesses to keep our bruised flesh look for these ghastly fellas. Alright, so now we're going to go in and start doing some zenithal coating, uh, mainly focused towards the wing membranes. This is just going to be a little bit of a cheat for us when we go back in with some contrasts and inks to add some colour values to those membranes. So now we're going to go in with some Magos Purple by Citadel. Um, this is a contrast paint, so we're going to maintain this um, in all through the recesses of the muscled areas. This is just going to help us maintain our bruised flesh look. So as you can see, I'm not really being too careful with this, I'm just kind of slapping it all over where any of the muscles are bunched up. However, I have left uh, big areas like the pecs um, and the large chunk of the thighs on the side relatively plain, um, just because we're going to go back over those areas anyway. So it's not too important if you get this uh, purple over the outermost parts of the muscles because we are going to adjust this later on. So this is where I am at the moment. I've actually forgotten to film the extra layer of white that I put over the top of the contrast paints. So apologies for that one. Um, but with that layer, you just kind of want to do a more focused pass with your airbrush and just try and really focus uh, on the center parts of the muscles, leaving any recesses uh, with that bruised look. Um, but one thing I want to demonstrate quickly here is with your contrast paints if you put it on and you think you're going too heavy and it's sticking out too starkly um, on the muscles um, what you can do is you can actually take a little bit of water clean your brush off take a bit of water and um, you can sort of feather that back out into the center of the muscles a little bit and that will sort of um, alleviate uh, those sudden lines of of purple contrast there but yeah, just, just something a little extra. I just wanted to show you on another model quickly to demonstrate. So here too, like while it's got a load of water in there, I'm just adding a little bit more contrast paint to that and that will just uh, self-regulate itself and push itself out a little bit uh, while still remaining pulled up pretty much in the center. As you can see there, it doesn't really drip too hard um, like it would if it was a, a wash, it'll just sort of pull up in that area and you can use some water in the center to try and feather that back out. Okay, so back to the wings. Um, what we're doing here is we're just going in with some Blood Angels Red contrast paint and we're going over our Xenothal 
uh, layering that we've done there. So we had the black primer on the bottom and then we've cut him from the top with uh, the flayed one flesh. And that's just going to give us the values for our colour before we even get to it. So the whiter it is, the brighter the red, the darker it is, the darker the reds. So now I'm just going back in with some purple ink. You can use uh, the purple contrast if you like. Um, they're all relatively similar. So I'm just going back in over the top of the red with that purple just to try and tie it in a little bit more um, with that purple tone to the rest of the body. Uh, and that will give it a bit of a darker look. So after a quick hit with the blow dryer to dry all that out, we're going to mix up some streaking grime for dark vehicles and mineral spirits to a 50-50 mix. Put it in our airbrush and we're going to go ahead and spray this essentially all over the whole model. We're going to use this to try and mute down the colours a little bit and give our flesh a, a more greyed uh, off meat colour. So once you've gone and done all of that, we're now going to take a Q-tip, load it up with some mineral spirits, and we're just going to start dabbing away at that streaking grime. Now the reason we did that 50-50 mix is so the colour wasn't so opaque um, on the skin that it didn't take away all of the purple tones that we've left in the muscles. Um, I've found that through some testing, if you do a straight out of the bottle mix, it tends to pull up in the recesses too much and you lose a lot of that purple value there. So the 50-50 mix has been good in this regard. As you can see here, I'm not being too careful with this um, on the wing membranes. I'm just getting that Q-tip and I'm really just dragging it away. So now we're going to get a little bit spooky and we're going to use some Gorillia Green Shade through our airbrush. We're going to pick a few select points to highlight, um, you know, like I try to do one side of the face, um, do like the underside of the arms, and we're just trying to tint the skin colour into that spectral eerie green colour. This is ultimately going to add uh, some higher levels of visual interest for us and sort of uh, add a, one more little step of complexity to the skin colours that we've used.
So once everything's dried out, we're going to take some 502 uh, light flesh color. Um, we're just going to add a tiny little bit to our brush and we're just going to start doing a selective spot highlight on all the muscles. Um, you can do this as sort of uh, neatly or roughly as you want. If you want to do it a little bit rougher and save a little bit of time, you can really make sure that you take a lot of the paint off, like 95% of the paint off your brush um, and just dry brush the whole thing from the top down, so like an overbrush. Um, but if you want to be a little bit more selective, just go through and highlight the center of each muscle um, and then clean your brush and then come back through and start feathering that back out. Again, like I said, you can be as uh, gentle or as rough with this as you like. You can see there on the calf, I was just trying to do a little bit of a spot highlight and just feathering it in the center, but then with the back of the leg, I'm just kind of doing an over brush um, and just hitting the general area. You know, I'll do the same things with like uh, the face. I'll just do a bit of an over brush, just trying to pick up those higher uh, raised areas. But then I come back to the shoulders and I'll do a little bit more of a selective um, highlight just trying to trace along the muscles a little bit there just to pop out the the edges of the muscles and give it a little bit more definition so once we've gone ahead and done all of that I'm just going to take a 50 50 mix of our purple contrast paint that we used earlier and blood for the blood god and what we're going to do is we're just going to slap that down anywhere that looks relatively meaty along the back there. Now, when I put this on, I try to use whatever's left uh, on the brush to stipple it or to towards the top of the bones sticking out the back um, and then I load my brush back up and come in and I'll try and feather some of this down the skin um, just to make it look a little bit more like it's uh, dripping down the back. Once that's done though we're going to take some blood from the blood god straight from the pot and spoon that on in a pretty thick spot and that's going to give our uh, gore there a little bit more thickness. So that's going to be the recipe done guys. This is uh, what I'm doing for my own personal Flesh Eater Quartz Army. You guys can take this method and you can make some small adjustments, change the shades, uh, change the wing membrane colours and things like that. Just follow the same sort of steps and you guys will be able to get through it. Uh, so stay tuned for our next one and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.